Hello, hi, if you are seeing this video and you decided to actually click on it after maybe not seeing my face on your feed for many years, thank you for clicking. Hi, it's me, Serene. If you're like, who is this girl? Hi, I'm Serene. I used to create beauty product reviews, facial treatments, ASMR, as well as professional facial treatments here on this channel. I used to post three to five times a week, and then I kind of just disappeared. This video is inspired by recently watching the Anna edit, also just from kind of reflecting on the last two and a half years of my life and what I wanted to do with this channel moving forward. I kind of just ghosted you all. Here is a life update with a couple beauty product favorites thrown into it, like the good old YouTube days. You can think of it as a chatty favorites video. Let's catch you up. If you don't know this already, I got pregnant in March of 2020 with our first baby. Very exciting, really wanted this, and even more excited that I was going to be having a baby girl because my mother had always wanted a granddaughter. She wanted grandbabies in general, and she wanted a granddaughter. So I was very, very excited to be having a girl. I also really wanted a girl. Everything was really exciting. We found out a week into lockdown in 2020 that I was pregnant, which was a little bittersweet. It made the whole situation very scary and nerve-wracking, filled with a lot of anxiety. I also just wasn't sure what it was gonna be like. Chris wasn't able to go to any of our first ultrasounds, any of my doctor's appointments really. We tried to stay positive, we tried to still celebrate the best we could. Unfortunately, it was just a very isolating time for everybody. Throughout my pregnancy, my mental health severely started to decline. My doctor's office shut down at 30 weeks, developed pups. I just had a really difficult, difficult time coping. I actually developed prenatal depression. During labor and delivery, um, it was a whole ordeal. If you are interested in exactly what happened, to the most of my ability to explain during my pregnancy as well as postpartum. I have those videos and those kind of like story time videos over on my new channel, More Serene Wu. I did document a little bit more of my pregnancy over there. Needless to say, nothing went as planned. It was just a time that was very, very challenging for me personally physically, mentally, and even relationship-wise with my own husband, with my family members, with friends. I had a lot of breakups with people in my life. I also broke up with myself. I was broken. I was a shell of who I used to be. And I tried to keep posting videos. I tried to keep creating content because for me, that has always been where I felt my best and felt an outlet to express myself no matter how hard life had become. But for the first time in my life, creating content wasn't helping me mentally. If you guys don't know, if you've been here for a while, my channel was originally called Dress Yourself Happy. I started this YouTube channel, this exact one, at the cusp of 2013-2014. I called it Dress Yourself Happy because I was going through a really difficult mental health period of my life and I was just really lost, I was really depressed, I was really sad, I was alone. And I started YouTube because I found the beauty community here online and I found all these other people that really enjoy testing out products, playing with products and getting themselves ready just for themselves. So I wanted to be a part of this community that I had found online and it was so new to me. So I just randomly went to Sephora, bought things, tried them on and posted it up here. And this is where Dress Yourself Happy turned into a very dedicated product review channel. I had Tester Tuesdays, Makeup Bag Mondays, all of which was to provide very detailed product reviews in the beauty world here. It was great. I had so much fun. It, it brought me out of myself. It made me feel joy and happiness again. I felt like there was this amazing community we had been building and I got to do some incredible, amazing opportunities. I was a part of the Laura Beauty Blogger Awards. I got to work with Fresh for a year. I got to work for Bare Mineral. Like I got to work with dream brands that teenage version of me would have died to even imagine a life that I was living from 2015 all the way to about 2018. But over that course of time, I also experienced loss. My mom got sick. She had an unexpected stroke during a routine biopsy, which completely took away the mom that I had known. Literally the night before, I had dinner with her, I hugged her goodbye, and I drove back to LA. And the next day, 
my mom was completely different and would never be the same. For six months, didn't know how she was going to recover from the stroke, whether she was ever going to regain any part of her speech, her mobility, or even her personality. And the doctor said we wouldn't know until around the six month mark. So it was six months of not knowing and kind of having to watch my mom almost like a zombie. And sure enough, around that six months, we started to see glimpses of who my mom was, but she was never the same. For the next six months after that, she started improving and there's more of her personality and she needed a lot of care still. So she was at a skilled nursing facility and we were just trying to like find this new normal. And I actually thought maybe I got my mom back for a while and we were going to try and have kids. My mom always wanted grandkids, specifically a granddaughter. And the second we thought maybe this is time, maybe we should try and have a baby. My mom caught pneumonia or caught the flu in the nursing home, which turned into pneumonia, which then her body was just too weak to recover from. And I ended up losing her in February of 2017. Thanks to this channel and thanks to work and the career it provided me and my family, I was able to continue to have a career and continue to kind of have something to look forward to outside of all the things that were going on in my life. But it was very bittersweet because my mom wasn't at her healthiest when I reached all of these milestones that we were looking forward to together, like reaching 100,000, getting to go on Amazon Live with Tati, getting to do all of these amazing um, brand partnerships that she would have known about. It was like this bittersweet success. After just go, go, going, even though I had lost my mom, I was so grateful for this channel to really help me keep going. Um, it kind of felt a little silly after a while. I still loved beauty, don't get me wrong. I will always love beauty and it's always been my safe place. I think I was just having like an existential crisis or I was, I was starting to realize like, all of this stuff wasn't making me happy. Creating and the community made me happy, but the constant need to try the newest product, which was never ending, was overwhelming and started to give me anxiety. The amount of PR I was getting, as well as the amount of product I was purchasing, was overwhelming, wasteful, and I started to see how wasteful it was and how useless and pointless it was because I was looking at my finances and I was spending tens of thousands of dollars on beauty products that I wasn't even really getting a chance to use because I was buying it to review and then I would forget about it and move on to the next thing. I was in debt because of beauty products, which is the stupidest reason to be in debt. I was getting a ton of PR that wasn't as exciting anymore because it was happening so frequently. I became numb to it. I also felt a shift from my audience. I was feeling what they were feeling, which was this fatigue of new, 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 chasing the new, new, new. And while there's this beauty in playing with makeup and feeling beautiful and taking care of yourself through skincare, through treatments, through putting on makeup, there's also that fine line of overdoing it, putting a strain on your resources, financial or otherwise, and also this almost excess of constantly needing to find the next thing to make you feel better about yourself versus just using what you have. So there's this like weird fine line and I was having difficulties putting it into words and putting it into my content. So I did a no buy, low buy year, 2018. That kind of helped me shift my perspective on things and made me realize what a problem I really had with shopping and spending money. I've always had this consumerism mentality and this need to chase the next thing that's gonna make me feel better about myself. But starting my YouTube channel, while it helped me feel better about myself, kind of tapped into that fault of my personality and made it worse. And especially with dealing with the loss of a parent, getting older, debt, oh my gosh, what am I promoting? Really took that time during that no buy year, low buy year really, to just kind of reshift, shift my perspective on things. And while I'm not gonna be 
a no buy person or I have to use up every single thing before I buy a new one, I had to shift and find that balance that would work for me. At the end of 2019, we moved to our old neighborhood. We got really, really healthy through this process as well during the no buy year. I really focused on my mental health. I really focused on my physical health. I delved into nutrition. Chris delved into physical fitness. We both studied and got multiple certifications between the two of us. We both are certified nutritionists through Precision Nutrition. I'm also a certified health coach through Dr. Sears Wellness Institute, and Chris got certified through NASA. We just really focused on getting me as healthy physically and mentally because for me, it's one and the same. When I'm healthy physically, I'm healthy mentally. And we started to think that maybe I was ready to have a baby. And we decided we were going to try at the end of 2019 because we were feeling really good. I was still feeling a little confused about what I wanted to create here on this channel, but I started creating ASMR facial videos. I had always shared with you my professional facial treatments. I always got comments of like, could you just share the actual sounds? Because we love the skin sounds and the product sounds. I didn't even know what ASMR was. I had to look it up. Fortunately, at professional salons, I was never able to film the skincare sounds because there was always office noises, traffic, lots of little ambient noises that weren't actually relaxing and was very loud when you turn the spa music off. Continue to film professional spa treatments with my own music that I paid for copyrights for, as well as voice over the procedures of those treatments. Then I decided to start filming ASMR types of skincare videos on my friends. And that's really what I was doing for the last few years here on this channel was sharing professional treatments as well as my own personal ASMR facial treatments using the skincare techniques and products that I learned by being a part of the beauty industry for almost 10 years. They were really successful. I was getting millions of views. Those were the videos that had done the best for me here on this channel. And I was really pumping them out. I was feeling really good about the direction of my life and my channel at the end of 2019. I was feeling my healthiest mentally and physically. I was getting my nutrition certification. Chris was getting his physical fitness certifications. I was creating consistent ASMR content here on this channel to help you guys feel relaxed. Everything was going really well that we thought, hey, this is the perfect time to think about having a kid. If we're going to have a kid, let's think about having one. And so we did and we tried and then the world shut down and I said, no, we're not going to try anymore. It took away my professional facial treatment videos. It took away my ASMR videos. We were just taking a break. Uh, I was already pregnant. So I found out officially in March that I was pregnant or early April that I was pregnant. During pregnancy, I decided to start a separate channel to talk about and document my pregnancy since I knew that that could be kind of triggering for people who don't care about that stuff on this channel. I realized that not only was I feeling isolated from the world at the time when you become pregnant, but I felt isolated from my friends. I felt isolated from my family members and I really felt isolated from you guys. A community that had always been very supportive suddenly wasn't there and I wasn't sure if it was because my main audience had just kind of stopped watching beauty content or I had grown so many other people for just wanting to watch my ASMR videos, but I got some pretty nasty comments about my pregnancy. In hindsight, I shouldn't have posted about for my own reasons, but at the same time, I was so isolated from my personal life that I felt like sharing this amazing news with my community online because I felt isolated in reality. And I had always used the online community as a place for me to express and to share and find common ground. But it was the first time I realized how toxic that could become as well. And so the one outlet I had wasn't really there for me anymore. And when things started to open up again, I tried to go back to creating ASMR videos, but my, my heart just wasn't in it. I tried to go back to creating beauty content videos, but again, my heart wasn't in it. And it, because it felt forced, it felt like I had to create this content because it was my career and because, because I was being sent PR that I needed to talk about it and that didn't feel authentic anymore. I also didn't wanna push 
products down your throat unless I actually liked it and how was I supposed to like a new foundation every other week so it was just this very strange time of reflection and trying to find myself again I was also dealing with really severe postpartum depression and anxiety more so than anybody ever really knew about online or even in person unless you were Chris. We were trying to manage me and we were trying to hide as much of it as we could from our daughter, which her nickname is The Nugget. We wanted to make sure she grew up as happy and unaffected by what I was going through as much as possible while we figured my stuff out. We saw a bunch of different doctors to try and get answers. I was doing talk therapy. It's been a journey. It's been a two and a half year journey. Over that two and a half year journey, we have moved counties. We left LA. Before she started preschool, she was on a wait list because she wasn't quite old enough to be allowed to attend the preschool we wanted. I got home with the nugget and I felt like I was missing out on so much of her life. Not only did I feel like I was robbed of my pregnancy experience but I felt like I robbed myself of the first year and a half of her life honestly more at times it randomly started doing was filming clips of our days together that were happy moments and fun moments and then I would cut them together and voice over like her I called it a day in my nugget life I started posting them as a, an outlet for me and I was posting them for a few months before they even started to take off and I remember very vividly that I was out with Chris and the Nugget and I looked down and thought something must have been broken on TikTok because I had over 300 notifications on the app. It was unheard of. I was getting maybe 100 views, 200 views with three or four comments on each video. And I looked down and I realized one of the videos had gone viral. It was kind of freaky. I had never experienced something like that over the years being on social media on this channel. I've just kept my head down and kept working, hoping that my content would reach the right audience, hoping that people would find value in what I was posting. I didn't anticipate was that it would make people feel like they needed those products, whether or not they were looking for it. So that was when I took a step back from the product reviews. Basically, that was a little crazy, and I continued to post day in my nugget life videos over on TikTok. They kept getting a ton of views. They kept getting going viral and sh this was when YouTube started launching shorts so I would take those videos and post it on my motherhood channel that channel within a year grew over 200,000 subscribers and millions of views every month which was again very crazy very crazy growth for me someone who's been doing this for almost 10 years to get that kind of growth that quickly when typically I have to chug along and I don't typically get viral videos. I'm pretty uncontroversial. I don't like to play into the drama. I, tr I try to stay out of all the drama, which unfortunately keeps me at like a slow, steady pace or a stagnant pace at life. I started focusing on creating mommy and toddler content over on TikTok and my motherhood channel because it brought me joy again and it kind of helped me refocus on my goal which was to be the healthiest happiest mom to the nugget i know i've shared the nuggets real name online before but we since have decided to remove as much as possible of her real name because that's something i regret doing and i definitely i'm doing my best to keep her name private as much as possible so if you guys do know her name please respect our wishes and not share it all over the internet. That's on me. That was something that Chris and I didn't really think about when we got pregnant and when we had her. That's what I've been focused on for the last year, which was continuing to cre create short form daily vlogs on TikTok and shorts over on my motherhood channel. And anytime I thought about creating content on this channel, it just didn't feel right until I watched a video last night from the Anna edit. I have been watching Anna for a decade at this point. I loved how she just sat down and was just chatting and putting on makeup and sharing her favorites and updating you on her life. That's what I felt like I needed to do. I needed to sit down and update you on my life and share some of my favorite products that I've been reaching for for months now because I also ran into a viewer who works at Sephora 
I'm not going to say her name in case she doesn't want to be known, but I was at Sephora browsing and picking up my deodorant and she was like, oh my gosh, Serene, I used to watch your YouTube channel. And I was like, oh, used to. And it made me think so much of my core audience just kind of stopped watching YouTube beauty content and we started chatting. She ended up having two kids. I have one. And it was really lovely to talk to her because she complimented me on the fact that she always really enjoyed my content because I had a calming presence about me, which I don't think I do, but my friend Christine and as well as obviously this viewer felt like I had a very calming presence and she just gave me really good compliments about when she did watch my channel and then she explained how she kind of has just been off social media. And I told her that I totally understand and feel her. I kind of wanted to make this video for her, even though she's not going to watch it because she's not watching YouTube videos, but I wanted to make this video in the hopes that other viewers like her that used to watch me know that I'm still out there and to thank you. Thank you for have been there for me for all those years and thank you for still remembering who I am and if you're watching now thank you thank you if you choose to stay subscribed after watching this video because the future of this channel I'm gonna be honest I don't know I have a facial treatment from my good friend Janet over at Code of Harmony she gave me this incredible incredible facial treatment with this amazing facial massage that goes into my mouth I'm gonna edit that I'm going to post it as a professional facial treatment video. Will I be doing ASMR videos anytime soon? I don't think so. So if you're only here for ASMR videos, I can't promise you that you'll see them anytime soon. I'm not going to say I'm never doing them again. I don't feel the need to do it right now. Will I share my professional facial treatments here? Yes, absolutely. It takes me a while to edit them, especially being a mom and now working outside of the home as well because, sidetrack, I did get certified in Legree. For those of you guys who don't know what Legree is, Legree is group fitness. It's created by Sebastian Legree. It was derived from Pilates using the Pilates reformer, but it has evolved. It is not Pilates, it is Legree. It's its own entity. It uses the mega former machine and it is high intensity, low impact. Pilates is low impact, low intensity. Pilates was created to help restore the body and recover the body. Legree was designed to strengthen and build endurance in the body. The closest thing to call it would be functional strength training on a mega former machine. Part of my healing journey was finding group fitness again. I've always been a huge group fitness fitness fan and even though I work out with Chris a few times a week as my personal trainer and I've had personal trainers I always love going to a group fitness class for my own mental health and just meeting a community of like-minded people discovered rediscovered Legree went consistently became certified and I'm actually a level two certified Legree instructor and I teach at a Legree studio I teach two days out of the week, but I also sub quite frequently. And then of course I have a toddler that I am a full-time mom to, and I create daily vlog videos over on TikTok as well as my motherhood YouTube channel for shorts. I also create once a week, once every other week, long form videos over on that channel. That's very much about my life and being a mom. And then I have really become invested in sourdough bread making. That's something I really have a passion for. I have perfected my loaf. I posted my sourdough feeding schedule as well as, well as my easy sourdough bread recipe over on my blog, which I am very active on. If you guys are interested in my life beyond beauty, I post on my blog. Here, obviously I wanna keep it beauty. I wanna keep it very strictly beauty because that's what I found works for this channel. Um, I can't promise I'm going to post videos consistently here because I've slowed my beauty routine down significantly since 2020. I've always been on the less is more side of things and more focused on skincare, but I'm almost 40. I'm 39 this year. I'll be turning 40 next year. I know what I like. 
and I find such value in using up what I love and truly enjoy in a product and repurchasing that. So I'm not trying a bunch of new products as much. I do still try things. I still dabble. I probably dabble more than the average consumer. I find what I love and I stick to it these days. I find that it helps my skin look the healthiest and it makes me feel the healthiest and most radiant and beautiful. It also helps me get ready much quicker. Here's some beauty products I have been absolutely obsessed with for months, if not this one, I think for years now. This is the Euphoria Pregame Primer. I've been using this from launch date. I've gone through, I want to say like four or six. I've lost count. I have emptied so many of these and I always have at least one backup. I am not even a primer person. I never cared much for primers. I felt like it just was layering more stuff on my skin that I didn't feel like always looked good. This changed the game for me because what it does, it acts like a barrier to protect my skin from the elements. It helps reduce redness. It evens out my skin tone. It also locks in all of my skincare without pilling or feeling heavy. It looks beautiful without makeup or with makeup. I use this every single day. I do one and a half pumps all over the face. It just makes my skin feel moisturized and sealed for the day. It makes me feel confident. It makes me feel like my skin looks its best. I've noticed my skin improve with this. It's that good. It's just that good. That being said, for most days, I only wear concealer until recently, and I'll let you guys know what, but the concealer I've been really loving is the Tower 28 Skin Serum Concealer. Before this one, I was using the Kosas one and then the Ilia one. I completely emptied the Ilia one and was playing around with what was left in my makeup collection until the Tower 28 one came out, and I'm in the shade EP. This is absolutely beautiful. I use it under my eyes, around my mouth, and on any discoloration I have for no makeup days. I can just do a little bit all over my discoloration and blend it out with my fingertips. I'll use it with my foundation or I'll use it completely on its own. This wears beautifully, blends beautifully, and looks like skin, but better. I actually was having a conversation with Fiona, the founder of Euphoria, and I was telling her how her products make me feel beautiful again, especially since having a baby. I don't even feel like I need to wear foundation. And in fact, I don't like the way my skin looks with most foundations anymore. And so she launched the Date Night Foundation. It's the only foundation I've been wearing if I wear anything. I tried it as a foundation, and I'm gonna be honest, I just don't like the way foundation looks on my skin. I don't care what brand. So what I do with this is I use it more as a skin tint. I use half a pump, got it all over my face, I blend it out with a brush, and then I kind of use my fingers to tap it in. This has so many skincare benefits and antioxidants to protect your skin from the elements. I also love that you can actually sleep in this foundation. The whole thing about Euphoria is that it's makeup you can sleep in. I like that it comes in a pump, that it's a frosted glass. I'm in the shade 245. It's the perfect shade match for me. Their foundation shades are actually really flexible. So you go close to what you need and then it kind of just blends and melts into your skin. This makes my skin look like skin, but better. It evens out anything that the primer didn't even out. You can use it with or without a primer. I like using it with my Euphoria primer just because it's my go-to. And this makes me feel like I'm sealing in all the good stuff for my skincare. It, for long Disney days in the humid heat. I've used it when I teach a long day. I've used it when I work out because I was teaching and then I worked out and it holds up. It doesn't melt off my face in a weird way. It doesn't blotch off. It looks really, really beautiful throughout the entire day. So highly, highly recommend this foundation. I wear it as a skin tint, but if I needed it for like photography or if I wanted to film something and look a little bit more put together, I could definitely up it to one or two pumps and build up that coverage. But I don't feel like I need that coverage these days. The other two products are cheek products from Euphoria. So what I do with this blush, it's a brownish blush. It's the But Tonight shade. And what I do is I actually draw 
underneath my cheekbones and then I blend it up and out and that's what I'm wearing today. It gives me definition but it also warms up my face and it's one and done. I want something a little bit more pinky. I go in with their color changing blush oil. This is my second one. It's absolutely stunning. It makes your skin look radiant. Two products from Euphoria kind of changed the whole game for me when it came to wearing makeup. I stopped wearing it essentially because of these two products. I would just put this on my cheeks and blend it out. It gives me the most beautiful pinky flush and because it's a blush oil it has a nice light reflecting quality to it. Really what was the first product I purchased from Euphoria. So I actually bought Euphoria products before they ever gifted me because I heard so many amazing things about them and it was so unique and innovative. And now I like to call them my uh, beauty friend. This sucker, this is from Chanel. This is the Transparent Balm Essential. This has been sold out all the time, but I love, love, love this. It's just this beautiful, glossy glow you you can't even really see it it just makes you look healthy i like putting it on my eyelids as well as on my cheekbones or on my cupid's bow if i want a little bit more glow or radiance the lighting is awful today because it is like the gloomiest rainiest day here in southern california so bizarre an amazing like kind of magic stick that makes you look highlighted without glitter, without shimmer. It's just like natural, healthy looking skin. Sold out everywhere, we couldn't find it. And then Chris was actually at the Charlotte airport and asked them if they had it and they had it. So he bought it for me there. Unfortunately, he was there because his father-in-law passed away suddenly. That's been going on guys. I don't mean to just gloss that over, but I feel like I spent like 30 minutes talking about my life to try and catch you guys up. Um, the most recent thing that has kind of happened to our family is the loss of the Nuggets' only grandparent that's left. So for the most part these days, I'm wearing DIY lash extensions because they're just a lot more affordable than getting my lashes done. When I left LA, I had every intention of going and driving up there every few weeks to get my lashes done, but it just didn't work out that way. Like the reality is I don't have time to drive up there every three weeks. My schedule just didn't always line up with my lash artist because she was always very booked and very popular. I ended up finding a referral from her for someone who comes to the house and she's amazing. She comes to your house in the Orange County area. Yoko Mobile Lash is her name if you guys are looking for a really reliable, good lash artist. The issue was like, we're just trying to save money. We're trying to cut back a little bit because I'm sure you guys know inflation is insane. Um, the cost of living is just astronomical. And with me taking a back seat to content creating and just focusing more on being a mom and creating when I can and doing it more for joy, it's just we got to cut back where we can. So I do still get my nails done, but I took a break over the summer. And then for lashes, I find that I like being able to rub my eyes every so often. So even with lash extensions, I couldn't really like mess around with my eyes too much. So I discovered Wink Click through TikTok and I've been using their Demure lashes. So these are the ones I'm wearing and they come in a set like this, which I like because I don't have to think about how I'm gonna design my lashes for the week. I don't love how thick the band is. I do feel like there are thinner bands out there from Lashify or even Kiss Falscara. I love Kiss Falscara, but I love the lash maps of Wink Click and how you just buy a book. I discovered where these cluster lashes from Amazon, which are like $14 for one set. And that's even cheaper than Kiss Falscara. The only issue is I'm never gonna use a length 16 and I'll maybe use one length 14 per eye per set. So I'm gonna go through them unevenly, but at the price point, it's so affordable. And what I love about these is like, if you can see, I don't know if my camera will pick it up, but that lash band is so, so thin. This is like the thinnest lash band I have ever played with for cluster lashes, even compared to Kiss Falscara. This is the volume set. And even the volume set has such beautiful, thin lash bands. So these are great, affordable options. And then I really like the glue from Wink Click. I find that the glue from Wink Click is very long lasting. So what I'll do is I'll actually apply the Wink Click glue on the cluster lashes from Amazon, and then I'll go in 
with the mascara type of glue and then I'll use both and they'll last until I'm ready to take it off. I've had to personally want to remove them because I wanted to clean my eyes properly and rub my eyes and give them a break before they fall off. Whereas the wink click ones, because the lash band's a little bit thicker, I don't feel like they last quite as long. They last about a week on me. When I'm not wearing these DIY lash extensions, I've really been enjoying this mascara from 3CE. I purchased this from Style Anetta. I love about the wand is that it's so thin that I'm able to really get into my lashes and build up the volume and length. It's just a really nice mascara that I haven't heard too many people talk about. It's called 3CE Super Slim Waterproof Mascara for Lash by Lash Curling. Those are some of the beauty products that I have been ride or die for quite a few months. If you ever want updates or quick updates of products I used up, I always share those on my Instagram stories. I know it's hard to like catch up on everybody's stories every day. I just wanted to sit down, update you guys on where my mind is, where it has been over the past two and a half years, maybe what the future of this channel is, which to be honest is I don't know. So if you have feedback, leave them in the comments. If you're like me and you're just more interested in overall lifestyle content, then definitely check out my newer channel more serene woo it's got all of my lifestyle content we do weekly vlogs travel vlogs um i'm gonna be posting some fall stuff it is family oriented and family related from a mother's perspective if being a mom or having kids is triggering for you i would just stay away from that channel post daily vlogs and daily tiktoks literally multiple times a day over on my tiktok account as well as over on that shorts account for more Serene Woo. And as always, you can catch up with me on Instagram via DM and my blog, my blog. I have been blogging very consistently and that's really where most of my focus is gonna go moving forward because I'm able to work on my blog when the nugget is asleep. I'm able to work on my blog pretty much any time of day and I am able to share a vast variety of content from my recipes I love developing. I am a certified nutritionist and I love food. I also love making food that my family loves that's also nutrient dense. So if you're interested in food and recipes, definitely check out my blog. If you're interested in product reviews from a life lifestyle perspective, check out my blog. I made a blog post about the best walking shoes after walking a million steps at Disneyland. Yes, I did the calculations. We have walked a million steps at Disneyland in the last year and I have the three best walking shoes that I think are worth checking out if you want to go on a European vacation or anywhere that you're gonna be walking a lot. I also post like travel guides and stuff like that, like ways to save money but still have fun at Disneyland, as well as we recently went to Carmel by the Sea, lots of fun stuff like that. So the blog is more of like a hodgepodge of things that bring interest to me and that I'm interested in and I wanna share with the world. And then the this channel will only be beauty the second channel is definitely more my daily life and I post there very consistently because it's just where my life is right now. And here I'm gonna post my professional facial treatments, potentially more ASMR videos when I, if and when I feel the time and need to create them again and anything beauty related. So I just wanna thank you if you're still watching, if you're still subscribed or if you're a new subscriber or a long time subscriber. Thank you so much for being on this journey with me for the last 10 years. Thank you for going through grief, loss, joys, celebrations, everything. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And no matter what you decide, if you ever come back to this channel, if you unsubscribe or whatever, just thank you for being here. And I hope you have a wonderful, beautiful rest of your day. Bye.